We have a crucial area of three years, 2018, 19 and 20. In these years we have four or five different questions to answer. The first question is what is really important is for a team to understand how I create value and what is how I measure my own value. And this value, how I can sell my value. So the thing is about sponsorships, marketing deals, performance centers, TV, media and streaming. The teams need to understand, or let's say organizations need to understand, that they also need to develop themselves beside watching at the team side with the players. If a team gets independent from his players, it has a chance as a brand to survive. Because the second part, which is really heavy, is uh, that big players will come in and it's like a Pac-Man system with big sharks. And I think the, the biggest risk, if you're not innovative enough, if you're not fast enough, if you don't have the best change management, and if you don't have the best, strongest revenue assets, you will have the, the, biggest, ch the biggest chances or the biggest risk in this case is to get uh, bought or just kicked out of the competition. So the next three years will be super tough for every team. The idea of the eSports center is a second layer for every eSport team. That means after starting with the grassroots industry, after having first players developing business, every team needs to have a common ground. And the common ground for this is such a center because in way of how to build and verify a brand is important because we need to have a facility, we need to have a place where we can have things going on. And I think what's also really important is that teams understand that with the relationship with their own esports center, they get more independent. And independency is a really, really matter of fact of developing revenue. And uh, esports center today for us at Penta, for example, is a nearly 50% revenue income per year. So uh, it got uh, from a C product to an A product. And so I think it's a really smart solution with our Polish friends from King Green to build this center because an eSports performance center is the stadium for every club of the future. I think innovation is the most important thing what a team can do. That means go away from the <laughs> principal agent relationship of a player and a team and see out of the bubble and understand what you can do as a, as a company, as an agency, as a consultant and as a brand. And I think the things is about having your own platform, creating content, being an agent for the partners we have. Because today we see Lagardère Sports are coming in, all these big players, but the issue is the same. They need to understand the market. And the team owners actually are a big, big slice of the big cake of understanding the market. So the challenge is for them to deliver this to partners. I think data, data is a really important point. Who, who I have, how many people, which age, this is the standard data, but then comes how much money they're willing to spend in what they're interested, how I can reach them, what they consume, how they consume. So in the end, it's about the data, about the people I reach. As a sports brand, as a also, let's say, yeah, brand influencer, it's important to know your data. Even if we have in this year, the 25th of May, coming the new, re new regulations with the European Parliament about the data aggregation and data rights, it is tough for Europe because Europe cuts himself a, bay, a bit away like from the American market, where data companies like Google, Apple, Samsung, uh, sorry, Amazon, they're all pretty, pretty big. So um, the key fact is for eSport teams, be innovative in case of content, data, multimedia, streaming, agency and consulting. I mean, it has to win still the future of entertainment. It is a perspective of future entertainment. Definitely eSports is a new source of entertainment and media for the next years. But I think to be perfect and solid and strong future winner, you must develop real content around. So I think today eSports starts to incubate himself, starts to learn about how to create great solutions for all the fans around, but to tackle giants like HBO or huge cinema production companies, they know how to create entertainment and media. So I think the next three, four years is the same amount of time like we had with the, the, the focus on the teams. So I think 
in the next three years, it is the big question if esports is able to do it. But for now, we are on the path, but we are not reached our aim. We are not in the, in the finish line. And it's an example because if you, if you watch at Game of Thrones, it's a really great production and people love it. You need to create this kind of content, this kind of love brands, this kind of... Esports media today is about having a game and people play the game. But about the characters behind, about the teams, the relationships, the economy, the streamer, the YouTuber, the player, the team owner, the franchise guy, everybody in the system. These are undiscovered people somewhere in the darkness and they are actually creating the media. I mean, if we speak about esports media as we have it on Twitch, it's pretty powerful and nice, but we need also in the next 15 years this window of classic TV, cinema, box office, and all these kind of, of channels. We need them and they need us. And this kind of uh, compliance process or this kind of translation, this is the, I think, key to success for esports to become this kind of media player. The question is, of course, who you pitch because if you do it from the first contact up to the sea level, or let's say you are in front of a decision-making person like a sea level, I think today important is, of course, everybody have passions, everybody have dreams, ideas, visions, but I think most important is a, is a mix of don't present too much in one time, try to understand, to lift up your shoes and get in the shoes of the person who you're speaking with. And I think the most important is to understand who I'm talking with and what is his demand. Because a lot of teams have their, uh, let's say, uh, pink glasses. They say, we are cool, we are nice, we are tough, we have this and this and this. But the problem is a lot of companies can't handle it, don't understand it, and for them it's most important how we can start, what it makes sense. So if I want to pitch somebody, I think definitely work with people together who have the exp ex experience, who can advise you. And otherwise, when you make a pitch, try less than more. If you write such a text, go up to this one. If you make a pitch deck which is so big, try to minimize it on this size. So simplify the facts and go step by step. Better is three steps as one big step and you start to struggle and you lose your feet. And also the kind of how you present something. Today material is really important, so the presentation should be well done, but in the end it's all about how you emphasize and speak with the person who is in charge of the company. If I want to make a deal, if I want to sell sponsorship, it's, it's, it's not easy, but now people have open eyes, open ears and open eyes, actually both. So everybody is interested, has demand, but it's like Cleopatra, she's coming with her feet slowly in the milk, and uh, she don't do the step fast, she want to try, she want to test. And this is what we need to understand also to have a deep breath and to have uh, patience. I think what the most important thing is what we have in esports is that everybody is a piece of esports. There are different people in different positions. There are leaders, there are thinkers, there are visionaries, there are also operators, makers, creators. But I think what esports made it so big is my lovely phrase, when I was the last 15 years like a priest in the desert with a shield where stands eSports and people was looking and saying, who are you? What the, like, like also Hannes said today in his presentation, there was who the fuck this 10 years of eSports, who are you? And now we have this gap closed and it is closed because of the patience and shields and deserts of everybody in his environment who pushed esports through the, let's say, different generations. So in the end, every esports enthusiast, every player, every manager, everybody here in this room is a huge part of success of this story. And I'm, this, I'm really happy and proud of it. So that's esports, I think, is an industry which jumps over religion, culture, colors, identification, language. You can speak in English, we can Deutsch sprechen. The most important thing is we share the same passion and this is really important.